So hi everyone, this is Jastic here from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a 100% walkthrough for the indie title, The Clocker, or Clocker, as, as it appears in some places. So as a heads up, as always, this game is a 100% walkthrough. There is a full spoiler warning effect from this point onwards, as I will show you the entire game and all of its cutscenes. Now, to make you guys aware, this does actually take two playthroughs. So in this video, there are two playthroughs, but you're looking at around about one hour to 45 minutes roughly a playthrough so it's not too bad for time um, one playthrough we put a lot more effort into getting a lot of the missable achievements so that will be the first playthrough of the game where we will bag uh, put the good ending to the game as well as uh, lots of different achievements around you know link getting parrots to talk to pigeons and all of this kind of jazz so it's worth also noting on top of this that you need to be pinpoint accurate where an individual is going to stand or at what point in time something takes place. So copy exactly what I do in this guide. It is quite tricky and in some cases you can get it wrong. Uh, and I will talk about some of those examples as I go through. But overall you are looking at around about 2 hours to 2 hours and 15 minutes for the full 1000G on the game. Overall it's an okay game. It's not bad. Um, it's quite well built. It's not too buggy. Uh, but yeah, the the premise, the concept, and everything that's kind of behind it is pretty cool. So let's get this started. So this first part that you walk into gives you some of the the game's basic mechanics. It is very much like Final Fantasy VII where you must press A or X or whatever it is to move the conversation or dialogue forwards. Once you've cleared the dialogue, walk to the left and speak to the little girl. And once that little girl has disappeared, you want to keep walking to the left and eventually you'll end up on a workbench. When you're sat down at the workbench, I think it's X that you have to push down to sit at it, you hold down the left and the right trigger, L2, R2, uh, and all the cocks will go crazy and eventually you'll fall through the floor. Once you've fallen through the floor, walk through the door by holding B. And keep walking to the right until you bump into a bunch of thugs. These guys are going to try and cut you up for some money. Uh, and in any situation like you would do that, you would just run away. So press left, have the character run to the left. And eventually he will run out of breath. And then once that is over, keep walking further to the left and you'll go to the pawnbroker. He will prompt you to push the back button. And this will show a pendant of you and your family. Not quite your wife. And then you want to turn over that pendant to get some money off of the guy. Once you have that money, you want to make your way over to the left and you will bump into a crazed version of Alice, who is your daughter. And that will then proceed you forward into the main game itself. So I'm not going to rate the next part because it's pretty much just talking from here. So once you've had your uh, long-winded conversation with the guy that is totally not you caught in a time loop, you will pick up a watch off of the guy, and this guy is gonna. So this watch is gonna trigger a bit of a mini game. 
So once you've done with the dialogue on the, the watch, the guy will have disappeared and you want to make your way over to the bench on the left hand side and we're going to dismantle this watch to try and figure out what's wrong with it. The first task for the actual watch mini game is to use a screwdriver. You want to head over to the screws and you want to push X on them and take them out. There are a grand total of five screws on this layer, so keep moving forward and take all of the screws out. Once you are done unscrewing, tap the right bumper and you're going to get a pair of tweezers. Use the tweezers to pick up the blue thing that's in the middle and then you want to take out each watch face that you see. So there are three in total, move around, press X on each one, pick it up, lift it out, nice and simple. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to remove this kind of background to the watch itself, press X to pick it up. Press RB twice to switch back over to the screwdriver and then you want to undo the additional five screws that are on this layer. And once you've removed all of those screws, press RB twice, or once, sorry, apologies, to get the tweezers back and pull out that top layer, and press the right bumper until you get a magnifying glass, and then move your magnifying glass into the middle, press X and you will find the broken part of the watch. you are done at your workbench, you want to head to the right and you want to exit the building. So grab your cap, press B and leave and head outside for a kind of a little cutscene where you will talk with your daughter uh, and eventually she'll run away. And that is pretty much the intro part of the game done and dusted. Okay, so as your cutscene draws to a close, the piano will kind of nearly fall on Alice and you will jump in and give her a push. This will smash the watch on the floor that the not you gave to you, allowing to freeze and pause time now. So you're kind of stuck in this limbo position, as is Alice right now, and when you pick up the scraps of the watch off the floor, you were able to forward and reverse time of a specific person or object on its own accord without interfering with any of the other time things around it. So pick up the watch off of the floor, press the back button to take a look at it and then you'll be prompted to press the right bumper to look at the other side which will show you that there is missing cogs that need to be found. Press the back button once again, hit the A button and you'll be able to take control of time. So press Y on Alice and you want to hit and hold down the right trigger to move her forward in time. As you can see, left trigger will pull her back, right trigger will move her forward. Hold down the right trigger until she face plants the floor. Hit the Y button to cancel that off and then you want to go across to the right hand side. He really doesn't seem all that bothered about the fact that he just crashed his daughter into the floor. But once the little cutscene is over, make your way to the right for a small cutscene demonstrating a cock exploding.
now that you're in control again, make your way over to the right and you want to go as far as you can across and you'll find this car and you want to control the car and you want to move that forward until it stops outside the coffee shop. Press Y to cancel and then you want to climb up to the top of your ladder and then you want to jump on the box on top of the car and then across to the ledge on the left where you'll see a cat on the box and you want to forward time on that cat box to make it fall over. Jump on over and squeeze through the window. Once you're inside this window you want to climb up two ladders and you want to enter the clock that is at the top. Once you're inside, you just want to skip through the dialogue and you want to exit the clock as soon as you can. So once you've done that, exit the clock and then we will be able to start moving forward on the main path. So now that you're done in here, you want to head back down to the street where you started all of this. So head all the way down the tower and yeah, exit out the window. Now that you're out of the window, you want to also then jump down to the street below. You can just drop down onto the top of the car to so hop over the box drop down and then drop down to the left and we're going to want to move the car forward just to get it out of the way. I accidentally moved the waitress behind it, I didn't mean to do that, but move the clock, uh, the, the car forward using the clock. Once you've done that, cancel and then you want to make your way to the right and we're going to go up into the alley on the right hand side of this cafe just here. We're not going to go into the cafe just yet, we're going to do a bit of setup work for our first or second achievement of the game. Into this area you'll see a cop with a gun and a guy trying to run away and a cat looking at a fish that has been attached to a ladder because that's where we store our fish. Take control of the running man and he will trip over the barrel which is where the cat is sat on. Head over and press the right bumper to focus on the cat. Take control of the cat and move his timeline forward so he gets hold of the fish. Once you've done that you want to rewind the guy that just fell over a little bit, not all the way. And once you've done that, you want to then walk over to the cop and you want him to pull the trigger of his gun. So forward his timeline the whole way. And this will scare the birds that are in the distance on the right hand side. Make your way over to those birds and we're going to need to make a drawbridge or a crawl bridge as I like to call it by leveling the ravens upwards. So press right bumper to switch, move them up so that they're in line with the ledges above you and the piece of the glowing gear at the top. Repeat this for all four crows. Now that they're all in line, climb all the way up to the top of the ladder and then you want to jump on the back of the birds and you want to hop on to the other side and you want to press X on this glowy thing here and that's part of the gears that are going to go into the watch itself to fix the clock that was back over there. Once you've done that, you want to drop down to the floor below and you want to make your way back over to the guy that is running away from the cop and you want to forward his time as far as possible he will run past, he'll stumble, he'll jump the cat, he'll climb over the fence once you've done that you want to make your way over to the cat and you want to rewind the cat so it lands back on top of the bin and the fish goes back on its ladder where it belongs and then once you've done that you want to forward the cat again but this time around it's going to get startled by the bullet that has been shot by the cop once you've pushed the cat as far forward as you can go, we can now exit the area through the way we entered. Once you're back in the other area that you started in, just make your way straight to the right and you will go through to the next area. And this guy that we're about to talk to now is critical to making sure we get the good ending. So chat to this guy here and you want to forward his timeline all the way forward until he goes off screen. Once he is out of sight, continue all the way down to the end and you'll find the burglar. You want to interact with the burglar and you want him to open up the window and when he's opened the window, jump on in yourself. Now for our first fiddly bit, so forward the burglar and get him to creep all the way up to the door until he unlocks the door just here and we're going to get ourselves an achievement here. 
once he's unlocked the door, walk forward and you want to speak to the orange guy that has just spotted him. And you want to slowly edge this guy towards the thief and he's going to throw a punch. You want to make sure that he leans back. You can't see him very clearly because of the door, but he'll lean back and you'll see this fist come forward. Don't go any further with that punch because you want to avoid hitting the criminal. And then you want to rewind the criminal a few steps. And then as this guy is in full flight, he'll fall over and he'll hit the floor. If you've done this correctly, you'll bag yourself the achievement called Nice Dodge. Once you've done that, you're going to want to reset both the burglar and the guy that threw the punch. So have the burglar jump back out of the window where he came from. And then you want to take control of the other fella and you want to rewind his time all the way backwards. Uh, and he'll forget about the burglar being there. And then make him go forwards to open the window on the other side. Once you've done that, we're not going to go out the window just yet. I got a little bit too excited. You want to go up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, you want to speak to the old guy and run the conversation all the way forward. <coughs> this then opens further dialogue with the old lady in the room to the left. So you want to also then forward her dialogue. So forward her timeline. Go back to the old guy and then repeat the same thing and hold it all the way down till he finishes getting off of the ladder. Now that he's off the ladder, make your way up to the top into his attic and you'll find out what was causing all the disturbance at the stairs. And it's another piece of the cog that flew off from the clock tower and smashed the window. Once you've picked this one up, you want to make your way back down to the bottom floor of the house and you want to go out the right window that has just been opened by the punching man. You won't spend too long in this garden either, so just grab the piece of the clock and you want to exit out of the house and you want to actually get back onto the street where the burglar came in. So exit out of the house, so go back in and go out the burglar window to get back to the main street. Now that you're out of the house, Make your way back to the very first area where you started and we're going to make sure that we can set ourselves up to get a gold coin that is key to getting the best ending in the game. So take control of the guy that you sent forwards and now at this point nobody else should be in the restaurant for this to work. So have the guy walk over to the, uh, the, the coffee house door. When he stands there he'll ask for a table. Then you want to make your way over and you want to chat to the lady that is stood by the door. So press right bumper, take control of her, and she'll encourage him to go inside and take a seat. He will then start stepping towards the door and then you need to actually move him into the restaurant. So hold down the right trigger and enter the restaurant yourself. When you're inside the restaurant, forward the guy so he sits down at the table and then forward the waitress so that she starts talking about taking his order. Let's now set ourselves up to get the last piece of the clock. So you want to go upstairs and you'll find a guy trying to put out a fire. Forward his time so he extinguishes the fire and then you want to exit back to the main street. When you're back on the main street, you want to get the, uh, the car to reverse back into front, uh, to get it in front of the coffee house again. Not reverse into, it's not a ram raid here. Reverse the car backwards. Once that's happened, you want to climb up the ladder and you want to hop across to the other side and you want to enter the tower that is on the end. From the tower, you only want to go up one ladder. Then you want to exit out of the window that's at the top. And now that you've extinguished the fire, you can keep going to the far right to get the next piece of the cog. This is the final piece of cog for this area. Once you've grabbed that one, you want to make a back turn and you want to make your way to the left and you want to go back into the tower and you want to go up the second ladder and you want to enter the clock that is at the top.
Now that you are inside the clock, keep going to the right until you see this little flippy thing that looks like a flipper from a, a pinball machine. And you attach the cog to the end of it, and then you want to go out to the left and exit through the blue portal. Again. Now that you've exited, climb all the way back down and go back to the main street and we want to try and return to Alice. Now at this point, I think you can die, but I never died, but time will start to fracture in front of you and you're going to need to run away from it. So drop down onto the car, go to the left, and you'll see that the screen starts to crack and crumble. You want to run to the right and you want to keep running past the next two scenes. Keep going right, don't stop. Press the B button when you're prompted to to move into the next area and run past the thief and come over to this weird blue dome. Now that is over and Dad has run off the right hand side of the screen, you're going to be back in control of Alice. Sorry, not back in control, in control of Alice for the first time. Now I have a very weird bug here where dialogue doesn't appear on the screen, but I can hear the pencil writing the dialogue. So I have to keep tapping the A button. You guys might experience the same thing. However, I do find it slightly amusing when we talk to the guy who almost dropped the piano on us, because one, he looks incredibly high, but at the same time, he can actually move his mouth and blink his pupils at the same time. Not his, not his eyelids, his pupils. Anyway, keep tapping the A button until you can progress forward and you want to make your way to the right. So Alice has a new, unique skill. She brings everything back to life. So everything that you have set up was your dad would now start to happen. And you want to enter the coffee shop is the first thing that you want to do. And the guy that you invited to the coffee shop or made sure he went to there and had the only seat left will start talking with the waitress and will place an order for some rice and eggs. You want to follow her upstairs to keep the conversation alive. And the chef will mix up some of the rice and eggs to go and she will take it back downstairs to the customer. You want to follow her all the way down. And what the customer is going to do, he's going to over pay uh, and gonna leave behind uh, some additional money once the waitress talks about the individual paying too much money press X on the waitress and you'll be able to get her, your hands on one of the coins Now that you've coldly taken the waitress's tip, you want to exit the building and you want to go around to the right hand side of the uh, building and you want to go into the alleyway that's next to the coffee shop and we're going to run all the way to the end of the alleyway. So this will cause the cop to run forward and chase the fugitive. This keeps the cat running forward as well and he goes behind some rubbish and the fugitive will escape. At this same time, you're going to bag yourself an achievement for getting the cat uh, to run away without taking the fish because it belongs on the ladder. That's where it belongs. Exit back out to the left. Go back onto the main street. You want to head to the right and you want to keep going to the right until you hit a blue invisible dome again. So keep running all the way down and then when you're prompted push A and then eventually push B to transfer back to your dad. So this is, I think, the chapter two of this game. Eventually you'll spawn into this area. There would have been another clock crash. 
First thing you want to do is speak to the guy on the right hand side with the cape. He does have a dog, but on my screen it doesn't appear for some reason. Then you keep pushing him forward and eventually he's going to run into the fugitive that you set free earlier. Move his time forward as far as you can. Once that's over, hit the cancel button and you want to go over to the fugitive and you want to forward his timeline as far forward as possible. Once you've done that, you then want to forward his boss's timeline as far forward as possible again. And this will cause him to make a phone call to somebody else, somewhere else in the level. And then you want the fugitive himself, you want to forward him so he hides in the bush out of sight. Now that that is over, you want to make your way to the left and we're going to go into the next screen. And once we're in the next screen, we're going to do a bit of setup work to make sure we can get the next golden coin. So head through the first shop that you find as soon as you enter this area and you'll find a guy with a tall top hat and a cane. You want to forward his timeline as far forward as possible. Once you've done that, you want to do the same to the lady that is just behind him so that he, she takes payment for his uh, credit card. And then you want to forward the top hat guy until he exits out of the, of the room. And once he's exited, you also want to follow him out onto the street also. Once back on the street, take control of him again and you want to keep him walking forward and when he gets onto the left hand side of the two guys on the ladder, do not take his timeline all the way to the end. And when he's under particularly the non-striped awning, you want him to stop there. Make your way down to the end and there's a guy pushing a button. You want him to fully forward his time all the way to remove the awning above the guy with the hat. And then you want to make your way down to the end and you want to enter the building that is on your left. Once you come into this building, there's a set of stairs to your right. You want to go up to the top and you can speak to the guy that um, the boss made the phone call to earlier. You want to forward his timeline as far as possible until he exits this room and then you're going to follow him. And now that you're on the balcony, you want to forward this dude until he gets towards the cop. He's going to put the murder profile of the guy below with the hat into the pocket of the cop officer. And then you want the bobby, so select him and you want to forward his timeline and he's going to do some uh, jackass style kind of stunts. He's going to jump off of the balcony and try and get his hands on the top hat man. Forward your mobile phone friend all the way to the table and have him sit down. Once you've done that, you want to exit back down to the street via going outside the left door. Now we are back on the street and we want to mess around with the kids' toys to break them. We're going to have a bit of fun here. So with the kid that's got nothing on him, you want him to walk forward and talk to the car, uh, kid with the racing car, with the remote control car. Talk to the kid with the remote control car and he'll brag about how he can make it go faster than the plane. So once he's done that, this will trip the kid with no toys on him to start walking towards the guy with no plane. And you want to forward his timeline until he's in line with the board and that board is going to turn blue when he's right next to it. Stop him there. And then with the kid controlling the remote control plane, you want to crash the plane into the back of the kid's head. This game has a problem with kids, we believe. Uh, reverse the plane and then send it forward in time again so it misses the kid this time. And it's just above the blue board. And you want to forward the kid falling over a little bit more. And then you want to go over to the kid with the remote control car and you want to drive his car up the billboard sign. And once you've done that, you want to kind of reverse the kid that's falling over a little bit so it points the billboard directly at the plane then have the kid with the remote control car crash his car into the plane and then into the floor and then take control of the kid using the plane and have it crash into the gear at the top 
Once you've done that, you want to rewind time until it resets back to normal behavior and it fixes itself. You then want to have the kid stand back up again, the one with no toys in the middle, so rewind his timeline a little bit. And then you want the plane to crash into the back of his head this time, but fall to the floor. Once you've done that, reverse the kid that does no toys on him all the way back to the point before he asked questions about cars and stuff going faster. Once you've done that, you want to grab the gear and then you want to exit to the very far right of this area. Once you're in this next area, you want to go out via the top. And this is going to put you into an area with a parrot, a kid interested in a parrot and a bike. So we want to start off by taking control of the parrot and have it look to the right. So move it halfway forward through its own timeline. Make your way over to the little kid that is excited to see the parrot and have the kid run down. And when she stops to look at the parrot for the first time, stop her there. And then on the dude on the bike, you want to make the dude on the bike crash into the kid. So send him flying and the kid flying and the parrot flying as well. Make your way back to the left and then you want to interact with the parrot and you want to have it fly a bit more to the right and it's going to land on top of the pole just here. Once you've done that, you want to rewind the cyclist back to the beginning. Once you've done that, then rewind the kid all the way back to the beginning. Once she's back, you want to go forward again and then keep making her go forward until she grabs hold of the pole where the parrot is sat and then have the bike crash into her again. Now that that's happened, you want to make your way over to the kid and you want to forward time on the kid so it stacks it into the floor. Once that happens, jump up to the top and you want to grab the gear that is on top of the, the building. Once you've done that, head back down and we're going to move the parrot across to the next pole. So forward his timeline to the right until he's above the pole. I believe it's the entire timeline. And then you want to reverse the cyclist and the girl again back to their original positions. When they're back in the original spots, have the girl run forward again and she'll lean up on the first pole this time. And then cause the guy to crash the bike into the kid yet again. He is going to seriously damage this kid. And then we want to have the kid place pound into the floor one last time and then we want to hop on to the balcony here and then we're going to go through the billboard and when we're on the other side of the billboard we want the cat that is sat on this drawing and this drawing is critical for getting the best ending in the game have the cat stand up and face to the left once that's happened go back out of the billboard and you want to make your way back down to the floor where the pile of people are Exit to the right from this area. So now you're at the football pitch and you've probably seen an achievement related to doing a bicycle kick. So we're going to bag that achievement now. So hop onto the football pitch and you'll take control of the kid with the ball and you want him to boot the ball into his friend. Make your way over to the goalkeeper once the ball is on the other side and have him catch the ball and run his timeline completely forward, not completely forward, sorry, majority of the way, he'll throw the ball and you'll see the kid on the left, it's kind of, you want it around that position in front of this guy. You want to then forward this kid and he'll do a bicycle kick. This will bag you the achievement for doing the bicycle kick. Stop the ball before it hits the goalie or he's able to save the, goal, the ball, the shot. Rewind the goalkeeper. And then you want to forward the kid doing the bicycle kick so the ball goes through the window. Once that's happened, get off the pitch, make your way to the left and you want to go inside the house. And we're going to do a bit of more work to set ourselves up for the next achievement. So once you're inside, you'll see the football has made it through this window. 
You want to go all the way to the top of this building and you're going to find a kid that is missing out on football practice and you want to make him move so take control of him and make him go all the way down to the bottom floor now that you are on the bottom floor you want to take control of the kid that is pushing the blackboard and have her push it just inside kind of the doorway and then you want the kid to kick the ball so he'll see the ball he'll get very excited he'll headbutt it and then he'll give it a kick uh, and this will knock the girl with the blackboard flying and you want to forward time until that girl falls over do your superman jump over the kid don't help her up just jump her and grab the next part of the cog Now make your way back to the kid that just kicked the ball and you want to rewind his time so he unkicks the ball, removing any evidence of him doing this altogether and he'll disappear back upstairs. Now just to play it safe I rewind time a little bit here but make sure the kid is still falling over. It just buys me a bit more time for getting an achievement later. And you want to make your way upstairs and then you want to send the kid up the next floor again. Now make your way to the right and you're going to find a kid sticking his head out the window that is obsessed with Parrot Girl. Forward his timeline until he says the words, what's happening? And you want to go to the left and you want to go up again and you want to rewind this kid's time all the way back. Once you're done here, you want to exit this building and you want to go back to the football pitch. Now that you are on the football pitch again, we wind our bicycle kick friend all the way back to where he came from and then you want to rewind the goalkeeper to the point of where he catches the ball for the first time. And then there's this guy who looks like he's going to do a slide tackle. You want to move him all the way forward so he's out of the way of the goalkeeper and then forward the rest of the goalkeeper's timeline and he'll kick the ball up very high and through the top window. Now you want to go back into the building and you want to make your way to the top of the floor again. Now for a repeat of the scenario earlier, forward the overly eager football fan and he'll kick the ball and it will hit the tutor on the back of the head. Make your way over to the tutor and you want to forward time and an explosion will go off. Just to the right of the tutor is a rat cage which you can send out the window, which you want to do. A bit cruel, but hey. And then we're going to drop a rat cage onto a kid's head. So take control of the cage, it will bounce off of the kid's head and you want to send it as far forward in the timeline as possible. Once you've done this, go back inside. And we're going to reverse everything that's just happened with the football again so that it doesn't get in the way of stuff. So rewind overly eager soccer kid so he's back to his original position. And you want to make your way downstairs and you want to go across to the goalkeeper on the football pitch on the far right hand side and rewind it so the ball is back in his hands. Now that's not entirely essential that you do that, but I do it because I experienced a bug where a football respawned in one of the areas and it blocked one of my achievements from happening. So just to be 100% certain, get the ball back to the goalkeeper and you can guarantee it won't appear back in the building. Now that you've done this, you want to make your way through the open door that is on the right hand side of the football pitch and we're going to get it our next part of the year. So now we are in a library with a fancy chandelier. You want to go up a floor and you'll see a guy with a ladder. You want to move his timeline all the way forward and he will stack it and fall over with his ladder because he's not looking where he's going. And you've got some guy who's sat on the floor. You want to forward his timeline all the way forward as possible so he goes and checks on the guy with the ladder. And then you want to rewind the guy with the ladder so he gets back up on his feet again. And then he wants to move him back forward and keep moving his timeline all the way to the end and to hit the switch up the top of the ladder. Once that's happened, take control of his friend. Now you need to be very precise here. Uh, this is a little bit tricky to get right. 
but you just need to align the chandelier so that it is in point with the arrow that you kind of see down at the bottom here. Just allow enough room for your guy to walk underneath. So head back down and you'll see that you'll be able to kind of squeeze through this gap just here. Hop on up and then you want to climb up the part here. Don't fall down the gap that I, I do, but hop several times. Rewind the guy that's just dropped the chandelier. Make sure he's keeping hold of it still. And then you want to go over to his pal on the other side. And then you want to forward his timeline until he grabs hold of the chandelier also. Now that they both have hold of it, go across to the guy on the other side and have him lower it down on his end. And this creates a pathway up to the top for you to go get the gear and do Superman jumps like I do. So you just might have to adjust a little bit if your character doesn't jump high enough. Go up to the top and jump higher than the part which I failed on a second ago somehow. Grab the gear and then make your way back down to the guys holding onto the chandelier. So for the guy on the left, rewind his timeline all the way back as far as possible. So he lets go of the chandelier. Go over and see his mate and send his timeline as far forward as possible. So he is the one now dropping the chandelier. Once that happens, this allows you to get out of the building. So exit to the left. Uh, and you want to keep going to the left past the football pitch again. So even further down. Uh, and go back to where we entered the actual game. Or the level, sorry. Not the game. From the starting area, make your way to the right and you're going to find yourself at a cargo place, a ship dock where they're loading cargo on, which is quite handy. So the first thing that we need to do in this area is make the forklift drop off his packages. So forward his timeline as far forward as possible to get him to drop off his load. Once you've done that, go stand by the guy who is with the freight container door open and forward his timeline as far forward as possible also. Hey. Once you've done that, go back to the left and the, past the forklift and you'll find a guy sat up in a crane. Climb up the ladder and you wanna forward his time. So now that the, door, the guy has closed the freight container door, you can pick it up and you can load it onto the ship. Now we don't wanna do that really because there's an achievement coming for this one. So climb down the ladder and then you want to make your way over to the dude with the pallet truck and you want to forward his timeline as far forward as possible and have him load and close the door of his particular container. Once you've done that, go back to the guy in the crane. Once you have control of Crayman, reverse his timeline all the way back as far as possible. And then go back and see the first guy who closed the freight container door and reverse his timeline as far back as possible also. Yeah. Now that's done. Climb up the ladder back into the crane. Again, get used to this crane. You're going to get bored of me saying it. And you want to forward his timeline as much as possible until the container is placed on top of the other containers with ladders. As you can see at the top, there is a cog piece. So climb down from the crane section, climb the ladders all the way to the top and grab the next cog component. you are back on the ground go back into the crane area and you want to rewind time yet again for the umpteenth time with the crane so to move that case back and then once you've done that you want to go back and talk to the guy who had the first door closing activity and you want to send his timeline as far forward as possible once you've done that you want to make your way back over to the crane man and we want to load it back onto the boat 
So once he says it's ready to go and the crane gives the indication in the top left hand corner, backtrack, move it onto the ship using the crane again by forwarding his timeline as far forward as possible. Now that this is done, we can set things in motion and we can get the ship to start its departure. So climb up onto the ship and the captain will be looking at the deck below. And you want to forward the captain's timeline until he goes inside his little hut. Follow him inside and then you want to keep on forwarding his timeline until he says it's good, it's time to go and gives the let's disembark orders to the guy over at Mission Control. Exit the cabin, and now we're going to make sure we bag ourselves our next achievement. So climb down the ladder, and you want to make your way over to the left hand side. And you want to climb back up into the crane tower for one last time for this playthrough, and you really want to rewind his timeline all the way. This will remove the crate, but the captain is given the go ahead to leave the port. So once that is done, Climb back down the ladder and just to the left of the crane you can see another building you can enter. Head in there and talk to the guy on the computer and forward his timeline all the way as far forward as possible. Once you've done that, return to one of the guys that is by the ladder on the boat. The person you need to interact with is the only person you've not spoken to so far in this area. Just literally forward his timeline, he's going to send off the boat, the boat is going to float away without its cargo, which is going to set you up for the achievement as you go through into the next area. So once you've done that, hit the cancel button, make your way to the right and go off screen. And as a guy with some controls, you want to forward the guy's controls until the drawbridge is lowered, and at the same time you're going to bag yourself achievement for the ship leaving without its cargo. And as you can see, the next piece of the cog is right in front of you. Grab that one, it is the last one for this area before we retake control of Alice again. And to trigger that, you want to make your way into this room just here. And inside you're going to find the clock. You want to enter the clock again and you want to go to the left and you want to set the gear into place. Once you've done that, exit back out through the blue portal and get prepared to get chased by fractured time again. So once you're back, you want to run to the left and oh no, it's coming for you. Run to the right until you gain control of Alice. So finally, we're going to be on a bit of an achievement streak here. It's been a little while since we've had a, a good run on this one. It's quite quiet to start off with. Once you're in control of Alice, you want to make your way over to the left and you want to go just stand under Jolly Jig and go over to the, the, the British telephone booth and a piece of paper will float down. Once you've got the piece of paper, you want to head out to the left. Fun fact, uh, the phone booths in the UK, for you those that don't know, they're listed buildings and they are important to us. Go to the left and exit off the screen. And you're going to be in the area where the top hat guy and all of the people were kind of, lots of things kind of going on. So you want to make your way to the left, you're going to go past the guys on the ladder and you'll see the cop that will fall down. He's then going to tackle the guy with the top hat and they give a bit of a fight. Alice is going to join in and start kicking him too. 
but he's going to get arrested uh, and eventually a police van will come across and they will take him away. He was one of the actual murderers, you know, not the fugitive kid that was running away in the beginning. Now this fella is going to have dropped a gold coin, but before we pick that up we want to speak to the guys on the ladder and you want to do that twice. And eventually what's this is going to happen is going to cause the ladder to fall over and the guy is going to get pretty livid at you and then his brother is going to get livid at him. And this is going to net yourself for the two achievement for the two brothers fighting. Now that they've slugged it out, pick up the golden coin that is on the floor that was dropped by Mr. Top Hat. And then you want to go back to the right and you want to go inside the building, the first building where the guy with the top hat was first encountered. You want to make your way to the left and you want to go up one floor. When you're on that top floor, you want to make your way to the door on the right, ignoring the other dude there, he does nothing. And then there's a lady kind of doing a bit of mopping just outside of here. Now you want to annoy her by kicking her bucket over. So go left to right and you'll kick the bucket over, which will tell you off and say, watch your step. She'll put the bucket back up in an upright position, kick it over again, and she's going to swear at you. And once she swears at you, you'll bag yourself the achievement for irritating her. Now that you've done that, you want to go into the door that is just to the left of her, which is, I can't pronounce, but it's Lorm Itzim, which is a blacksmith's place and he likes coins so head in head on in and talk to him and keep pressing a and as long as you've picked up both coins and the design work he will make you a piece of the cogs that are required to solve the actual game this is actually critical for you getting the good ending without this you cannot do it so once you have that one and he's done his work you want to head back down to the street where the kids were playing with their toys So once you're over there and you can see the kids are actually having a bit of a squabble, let them fight it out and eventually you're going to get yourself an achievement. Once the achievement pops you want to make yourself over to the far way to the right and you want to exit back to the area uh, where the fugitive is hiding. So as you come into the next area, you, I, I spot this kind of weird monster. I don't know what it is. It has no relevance to any of the achievements. Oh, if, if anybody knows, please drop it in the comment section below. He hides behind these boxes. You'll see his head pop out just ever so slightly as I'm leaving. But you press X on him and he'll actually talk to you in Japanese. Anyway, once you've done that and you go through the top area, you'll be back in the area with the parrot. And you'll see the kid fall out the window. I'm pretty sure we nearly kill him. Go to the right. And you'll be back by the football pitch and you want to hang by the vending machine and eventually the parrot's going to land on top of that. Once that happens you want to run down to the very far right hand side until the lady at the end closes the door on you and says no but it allows a pigeon to fly in uh, and down to the floor. The door will get shut. Make your way back to the vending machine and you want to stay by the vending machine until the parrot takes off and flies to the right again.
Now follow the parrot to the right, keep going until it actually comes across to the pigeon. It's going to set down by the pigeon, you just need to wait a few minutes and you're going to unlock the achievement called parroting where a parrot and a pigeon try to communicate. Now that this is over, we want to backtrack to the building next to the football pitch where all the kids are hanging out by the vending machine. We want to go inside the, the main building. And now we're going to need to be quick here just to make sure that we can block the kid from doing her chores. When she falls over, go stand between her and the blackboard and she'll eventually get up and she'll tell you that you need to get out of the way and just stay put until the achievement pops. Now that that is done, we want to exit this building and we want to go back to the uh, the cargo area where the ships were and your dad was last seen. So exit the building, exit to the left, go down the far side and you want to go up through the top of the area. After you trample all of the bodies on the floor. And you want to go to the right and you want to go across the cargo bay and you want to keep going to the right until you reach one of the invisible domes and what would appear to be a missing child. So keep heading to the right, you'll see the kid pop out of the bush do what anybody else would do in this scenario, ignore the kid. And then you want to press A on the speech bubbles. And then when you're given the opportunity, you want to press B to move forwards. Once you've done that, you'll be back in control of Dad and you'll be entering the final area of the game, which is a relatively straightforward kind of sprint to the end here. So once you're in control of Dad, you want to make your way forward. There is a miner here and you want to forward the miner's timeline as far forward as possible and he'll break this pot. Inside the pot you are going to find the next uh, part of the watch that you need for fixing, so pick that up off the ground. There is only two in this area and you want to rewind Mr. Miner so that he repairs the pot with his pickaxe and you want to go up the ladder once you've done that. When you're at the top of the ladder, you want to make Bully Boy, his timeline, go all the way forward until it's over. Once that's done, you want to climb back down the ladder and then you want to forward time so the miner then places something onto the basket and he will. Uh, this will cause the guy at the top to move the basket upwards. So once you've done that, climb up, forward the timeline on the old guy. This means you can then actually move forward and get past him because you can see there's only two planks allowing you to move. When he is out of the way, you'll be able to run across the water to the other side to some people with generators. So for us to get the final piece, we want to have the guy on the left drain all of the water out of the pond. So move his timeline all the way forward, that'll fill it up and he'll say I'm done. Make your way over and you want to talk to the girl on the other side. She's going to swing a kick. Don't follow it all the way through. Just get the kick in motion. And then once that's happened, you want to rewind the guy on the left so that it drains all the water back out. Because otherwise she won't switch her machine on if that's the case. Once that is drowned, drown, drained out, you want to forward the timeline on the girl so that she drains out a tiny little bit of left, what's left in the water below. It's not a huge amount, but once you've done that, that'll allow you to go down the ladder and grab the piece of missing gear at the bottom. Once you've got that, make your way back up to the top.
Now that's done, reverse the girl's timeline for the short part that it is. And then you want to go back over to the guy and you want to forward his timeline all the way forward as far possible. And once you've done that, you want to forward the girl's timeline as far forward as possible. Now that that water has been raised, you can cross on over and you'll be into kind of like the final area, which is a sprint to the finish in this sense. You want to forward the guy's timeline that is kicking the plank of wood so you can create a bridge upwards. So forward it. Once that wood has fallen down, go up the planks and then there is a ladder just in front of you. You want to go up the ladder and you want to forward the timeline of the person at the top so this actually fills up a pool that is below you that you can't see, it's just out of sight. Once that's happened, climb back down the ladder and that guy at the top is critical for doing that, having that timeline run through so that we can make sure Alice can get to the end of the game. Forward the guy holding the planks, he'll prompt the dude at the top to switch off the water. He'll reach out his arm, climb back up and have him switch off the water. Now that the water is switched off, head back down and you want to forward the timeline with the dude carrying the planks and as he comes forward he will throw his planks down onto the floor you just want to make sure that they're flat and flush and then this will trigger the lady on the other side to start lowering the planks that she's putting in for her scaffolding climb on up and then you want to forward her timeline make sure she hammers in the nail if she does not hammer in the nail you will not get the ending good ending of the game once you've made that go as far forward as possible you want to rewind the timeline of the guy just here and have him hold the planks up, make him walk back a little bit. And then you want to jump back over to where the other lady is nailing in the planks. And you want to go down the hill and you want to try and enter this temple that is here. Now the main character will stop you from entering this temple. You want to run back to the left as far as possible. So jump over the gap and then the time is going to start to crack again and you want to run back to the right and enter the temple and then you'll switch back to Alice after this point. So now for a very nice easy kind of run towards the end of the game. Make your way to the right and then this will set everything in motion. So the miner is gonna unblock the tunnel and a load of water is gonna flood through and clear out the rubble, allowing you to move forward. Once that's happened, you wanna keep going to the right until you reach the next screen. So in this next area, if you're prompted to push X at any point, don't do it. Make your way to the right and you'll see some wooden planks fall into the water. You want to cross over these planks once that's happened. The guy at the top is going to put his planks into pace and he's going to lean down and he hasn't set it up properly so it's going to fall. It's going to be a bit of a, an emergency accident. Run past these guys and you want to go into the temple and we're going to start to trigger the final sequence of the game to get yourself the true ending. So when you're in this area, keep running right as far possible and chase after the shadow of your dad. Then shortly after, once you've tripped, you will be in control of your dad. Look to the left and you will find Alice and you want to keep talking to each other and she's going to give you the final missing gear piece that allows you to complete the puzzle. Pretty much from here on out it is a case of walking right until you reach the end of the game and you will bag yourself the achievement for completing the true ending. Now we do a second playthrough in this as well the second playthrough is to get some of the missing achievements, so it's a bit of a mop-up. Uh, it's a lot faster because there's less thinking uh, around some of the things like the gold coins and the notes that you have to worry about. But 
pretty much progress through this section and when you're given the opportunity we want to rewind back and start the game again. So watch your cutscene out uh, and eventually the achievement will pop for 200G for getting the true ending. So now for round two, so this is playthrough number two. So here we go again. Once you're back in the main menu, flick your page book all the way to the start by holding down the right analog stick. It's a very confusing menu. And hold down the X button twice to reset the chapter fully. It's not the most intuitive menu, sadly. Now. Once you're back in, luckily enough, we can skip the intro piece, which knocks some time off. And this is also, given this is a less complicated playthrough, we can also do this a lot quicker because there's less things that we have to worry about. So once you're prompted, hit the RB button and you'll skip the intro right past to where your daughter is diving out from underneath the piano. Forward her time so she face plants into the floor and make your way off to the right. Now, you're going to see some of the major changes that we make here as you're going through to, you know, kind of different to what the first playthrough was. Once you're in this area, enjoy the little cutscene and once you get the opportunity, you want to move the car in front of the coffee shop. Once the car is in front of the coffee shop, you want to climb up the ladder next to it, hop on over, and then you want to forward time on the cat on the box, jump over the cat, and then you want to enter the tower, and you want to go all the way up and inside the clock to trigger the clock-related cutscene. Once you're inside there, you want to skip through the dialogue, and then you want to exit back out at first opportunity you get. Now that that is over, you want to head back down, so climb down the ladder, climb down the second ladder and go out the window, and then you want to jump back down to the, the street. So when you're out, hop onto the box, drop it onto the top of the car, and you want to move the car to the left, so that it's out of the way of the alleyway, not to the right, to the left, and go down the alleyway by the coffee shop. You don't need to go into it this time. This time around what's going to be different is you're going to forward the guy here so he trips on the barrel and you want to have the officer shoot his gun so forward his timeline as far as possible. This will scare the crows in the background and then you want to cycle the cat forward so it catches the fish and then you want to make your way over to the crows and have them form the bridge like we did last time so line them up with the gear at the top.
Now that they are in position, climb up the ladder and you want to go across the top of the crows and you want to grab the first piece of cog for the game. Now that that is in your pocket, you want to drop down and you want to exit to the left past the officer, leaving the dude on the floor to his fate. Once you've exited out that area, you want to go to the right and you'll be back by a burglar house. And you're going to ignore the guy that is walking along the street because we don't need his money this time. So head over to the guy burgling the house. You want to forward his time as far as possible so he opens the window and jumps on in. Follow him inside the house. When you're in, you want to forward the timeline so the thief opens up the door on the far side and gets the attention of the man in orange. Don't do what I do and rewind it a little bit by accident, just forward it completely. Go through the door and you want to forward the timeline of the dude in the orange shirt and he will punch the burglar out of the way, sending him flying. Go back to the burglar and you want to rewind his time so he jumps out of the window uh, and it dodges the punch somehow. Once he is out, you want to rewind the time of the guy on the right hand side. Once it's fully rewound, move him all the way forward and he'll open the window on the side of the building. Once you've done that, you can jump out the window or you go upstairs, the order doesn't really matter. Grab the piece of clock that's in the garden and go back into the house. Now that you're in the house, you want to make your way upstairs and you want to talk to the old guy that is sat on the sofa. So move his timeline all the way forward. And once that is done, that will trigger a, another possible timeline on his partner's side. So forward her timeline all the way forward. And then that will trigger another option on his end. Move his timeline all the way forward until he climbs up the ladder and climbs down the ladder and then gets off on of the ladder, allowing you to get to the next piece of the cog. Now that this is out of the way, you want to climb up the ladder and you want to head to the right and you want to pick that up and then you want to head back to the left and you want to climb down the ladder and the stairs and you want to exit via the burglar window back onto the street and you want to exit to the left of this area so you get back to the place where you started all of this. At the first area, run on forward and make your way into the coffee shop. As you'll see this time around, there is no guy sat on the inside because we didn't invite him in. Head upstairs and you want to get the chef to put out the fire. So forward his timeline all the way to the end and that will put out the fire. You want to backtrack to the main street. And once you're back onto the main street, you want to rewind time for the car so that it is in front of the coffee house again and climb up the ladder to the right of the car and jump across and enter the tower one more time. When in the tower, climb up the first ladder and the first ladder only and exit via the door that is next to it. Once you're on the roof, you wanna to go to the far right and grab the final piece of gear once you've got that final piece of gear, you want to make your way back to the far left and enter back into the tower and go up the next ladder into the clock. So backtrack to the left, enter the tower and then go up the ladder and into the clock. When you're in the clock, you want to go to the right uh, and put the gear in place and exit the clock once you've done that.
from the exited weird portal clock, climb back down to the main street. So climb down both ladders, exit via the window, drop down on top of the car and you want to go to the left towards Alice again and this is going to cause time to fracture in front of you. Once that happens you want to keep running to the right as far as possible until you switch over and take control of Alice. So now that you're in control of Alice again, you'll have, I still have this weird bug where the speech dialogue bubbles don't pop up, however I still get the really funny bug where the guy's pupils are in sync with his mouth and he looks like he's high on something, I'm not sure what, but whatever you believe it is, let me know in the comments section below. Now progress that on and once you have control of Alice, make your way to the right and you want to go into the alleyway where the cat and the guy, the fugitive, were running away from the police officer. <sighs> so that alleyway is just to the right of the coffee house. You want to push B and you want to go up the alleyway. Don't progress further forward because otherwise you're not going to get your achievements. Run with the cop. The cop will arrest the guy on the floor and the cat will run off into the distance with his fish. Now just, I always stand by and let the guy claim that he is not the murderer, just to be certain that everything is going to plan. He'll say, no, I didn't do it, or uh, something along the lines of, no, I didn't kill him. You wanna make your way to the left and exit the area. Once you've exited this area, go to the right and you wanna exit until you hit the, the blue kind of dome thingy that's stopping you from going to see your dad. It kind of looks like Zane's shield, bubble shield from Borderlands 3 for some reason. But keep going to the right uh, and you'll be able to progress forward and you'll also be able to watch the burglar get knocked out of the window. You are now back in control of your pops again so you'll see the clock is once again broken in this area and the pieces have shattered out and flying everywhere and you're going to see that the guy on the right the boss man is still there but if you head to the left the fugitive wasn't there from the first time you did this so head to the left um, and there's not a lot we can do so trying to capture the guy with the the hat's not going to change much so we don't enter the first building we just go to the left we go to the kids that are playing with their toys Press Y to take control of the kid that's got no toy. Have him challenge the guy with the car to see if he can make it go faster. Switch to the other kid and you'll proclaim that he can go faster than the plane. Have him move his car forward a little bit. Select the kid with no toys and walk him so he's in line with the billboard and it lights up to the color blue. Go over to the kid with the plane and crash the plane into the back of the kid's head, causing him to fall over. Rewind time for the plane a little bit so, and then move it forward so it's above the billboard. Go to the kid that is crashing into the billboard and falling to the ground and move him forward a little bit in time. And then have the kids with the race car move his toy onto the billboard. Select the kid with no toy and line it back up with the, uh, the billboard up with the plane and forward the toy so it crashes into the plane. And then forward the plane so it flies up and knocks the gear loose from the top. Once you're done with that, you want to pick up the gear and you want to exit to the very far right of the area. As you can see, we don't have to do as much in this area because there's less achievements to get this time around. Once you're back in the starting area, you want to make your way up and out of the top. And we'll be back in the area with the kid and the, her obsession for parrots. So when you're in this area, the first thing that we need to make sure is that the parrot is looking to the right. So forward his timeline until he hops around and looks to the right. Make your way over to the kid and you want to forward her to the point where she stops and sees the parrot and becomes excited. 
that's right here. And then you want to send the bike flying forward and to get him to crash into her, which startles the parrot and causes him to move. Make your way back to the kid and the parrot, and you want to select the parrot and you want to move his timeline as far forward as possible so that he lands on the pole just to your right. Once you've done that, you want to rewind time for both the kid and the guy on the bike fully. Then you want to forward the kid so she sees the parrot on top of the pole and she reaches up to get the parrot. Go back to the bike man and you want the bike man to crash into the kid and cause a bit more carnage as always. Once that's happened, make your way over to the kid and forward the kid's timeline until she falls face first on the floor and climb up the canopy and get the next gear. Once you've done that, we want to head back down and we want to start undoing some of the mess. So first up on that list is to rewind the cyclist all the way back to his original position. You want to do then the same with the kid all the way back to the original position, right where she started. Once you've done that you want to rewind the parrot so he goes back to his perch, or her, I don't really know. But the parrot needs to face to the left this time for this to work. Once this happened you want to make your way over to the kid. You want the kid to go as far forward as possible until she goes and sees the parrot and gets surprised by it. And then have the guy on the bike crash into the kid one last time, breaking the perch that the parrot is on. But now rewind the cyclist all the way back to the beginning. Go back to the kid and rewind her timeline until she stood up again. Once she stood up again, you will be able to make her go all the way forward and then she will see the parrot and she will start to move out of the way of the dude on the bike. And then we want to focus on the parrot and move his timeline all the way to the end so advance as far for possible as forward to move him out of the way. And then we want to make our way down to the cyclist and have him go all the way down to the end. Once that's happened we want to rewind the kid's timeline all the way back to the beginning setting us up for getting the next achievement, which is safe out. So when Alice comes through to this area, this kid will not get hurt and this will bag ourselves the achievement. The reason why we can do it earlier is because we have to get the other achievement for getting the parrot to go to the right. For some reason, it did. for me, it didn't work if we were going to the left. Once you've done that, exit to the football pitch. Now that we're at the football pitch, go onto the pitch and you want the kid that has got possession of the ball to kick the football at the kid, bouncing up into the air uh, to the point where the goalkeeper leans forward slightly. Have the goalkeeper catch the ball and keep moving his timeline forward until he throws it and gets it just above the ground in front of the kid in front of us. This is the same bicycle kick kid. Go over to the kid that is about to bicycle kick the ball, have him boot the ball in the football in the general direction of the goalkeeper. Move the goalkeeper out of the way because he will block the shot and then move the bicycle kick kids timeline forward so the ball goes through the window. Get off of the pitch and enter the building to the left and go all the way to the top and we're going to make the kid who is excited about football practice come downstairs. Okay so we're at the top, latch onto the kid and forward his timeline until he disappears out the door. Go back down the door the same. Find him there again and you want to forward his timeline until he goes through the next door. And you go through the next door and follow suit. And forward the timeline of the girl pushing the blackboard until she goes into the next room. Once you've done that, forward the timeline of the kid. He's going to head of the ball against the wall and then he's going to kick it and it's going to hit the girl. Knocking her over and you want to push the timeline forward on her end until she falls over. Superman jump over her and grab the next piece of the gear and then you want to go back again. We don't have to do anything further in this building, we just need to get out. So hop on over, ignore the fact that the kid's on the floor, exit the building and then go past the football pitch to the far right and enter the building over there.
So now that we're in here, we want to make our way upstairs. And you want to forward the timeline of the guy with the ladder as far forward as possible. He'll stack it. And then you want to forward the timeline of the guy with the book all the way forward. Once you've done that, rewind the guy with the ladder so he gets back up onto his feet. Uh, and that will recorrect the ladder. And then you want to forward him as far as possible until he climbs up to the top and turns on the switch. Once he's at the top, you want to take control of his pal and you want to have him pull down on the chandelier, so forward his timeline. I make a couple of mistakes here, so I uh, have edited that out, I believe. Yeah, so you can squeeze underneath. Um, you can actually get stuck and you can also fall down a hole that doesn't actually look like a hole. But make your way to the top and hop and jump up. And then you want to rewind time. I fell for that twice, sorry guys. Um, so the guy is holding onto the chandelier and the planks are repaired. Have his mate do the same, so his pal is going to grab hold of the chandelier. Go to the left hand side and you want to rewind time. Sorry, forward his timeline so he pulls it down. And you want to jump onto the chandelier and you want to make your way up to the top. And you want to grab the next gear. Once you've got that, jump back down and you want to rewind the time of the guy on the left until he lets go of the chandelier. Now that that's done, cross over to his friend and forward his timeline as far as possible. He's going to drop the chandelier and you're going to want to jump down and you want to exit to the left. So exit out of the building to the left. Keep going left until you go past the football pitch and you want to go up until you reach the area where you first spawned into this particular section. Back at the beginning, Head to the right past the guy with the dog and you want to exit it into the shipyard area. And once you're in the shipyard we're going to need to move the forklift truck as far forward as possible within its timeline so it drops off the parcels inside the freight container. Once you've done that you want to go over to the dude that is manning that container door and you want to forward his timeline as far as possible to set in motion some events allowing you to use the crane. So. Keep going until he tells you, saying it's fine to load it onto the ship. You get the little picture of the crane in the top left hand corner. Go to the left and climb into the crane and forward his timeline as far as possible. Once you've done that, climb down the ladder, make your way to the right, and you want to speak to the guy with the pallet truck. And you want to forward his timeline as far as possible and he'll also signal to the guy using the crane. Once that's in, you want to go back to the guy in the crane. So head to the left, climb up and fully rewind his timeline moving the original cargo off of the ship. Once the original cargo is off, you want to make your way back to the dude that was closing the original door. You want to rewind his timeline as far as possible so he opens up the grate again. Yeah. And once you've done that you want to go back to the dude with the crane and you want to forward timeline as far as possible so he picks up the other crate and it's going to create a ladder back up to the next gear. So once you've done that, forward the timeline as far as possible, you pick up the crate with the ladder on it. Once that's in place, jump down from the crane and you want to climb up the ladder and grab the gear piece from the top of the boxes. Now that you have this, make your way back down and we're going to undo what we just did. So make your way over to the crane and reverse all of the time and this will put that crate back down on the floor. Once you've done that we want to get off of the crane and we want to go speak to the guy that is holding the freight door open in the bottom right hand corner there. So climb down, go to the right, forward this guy's timeline all the way forward to shut the door. 
and he'll signal to the crane guy saying it's a good it's a good job let's go pick it up you get the signal in the top left hand corner if it's all done correctly go back to the crane and you want to place the cargo onto the ship you want to get on the right ladder not the wrong ladder like i do but back to the crane and place the cargo on the ship this time around we don't have to take it off we can just leave where it is to remove extra steps Now that this has happened, you want to go to the far right and you want to go up the ladder that is on the side of the, the ship. And at the top you're going to find the captain looking down onto the cargo deck below. Forward his timeline as far as possible and then follow him into the cabin. Once you're inside the cabin, keep forwarding his timeline as far as you can. And he'll give the signal it's okay to leave the area. Once you've done that, you want to exit his little ship hut. Once you're back on the land, keep going to the left and keep going past the crane and you'll find a little house with a satellite dish. Enter that room and there's a dude sat at the computer. You want to forward his timeline as far forward as possible and then you want to exit this room after you've done that. Head to the far right and you're going to see a guy kind of stood by the ship. It's the only guy you've not spoken to. Forward his timeline as far as possible and you'll see the ship and its cargo leave the bay. Once this is done you want to exit through the screen to the right and there's going to be some guy playing around with drawbridge controls. So once you're here, forward the drawbridge control guy, his timeline all the way to the end and it will lower the drawbridge and you can get yourself the last gear item for this particular area. So once you've got that lowered, release control of the doorman and pick up the gear piece on the floor and make your way to the right and enter the tower. When you're in the tower, you go straight to the top and you will find a blue... Um, uh, like a blue clock thing that you can enter again so climb to the top and once you're in there you will need to go to the left and place the gear into place once you've done that you want to exit the clock So now that you're free from the clock, run to the left and you're going to see the screen is going to start cracking again. Run to the right and you will swap back to being Alice and now we're going to start mopping up the remaining achievements for this game. So this is the missable stuff. When you're in control of Alice, you want to make your way to the left. As you come into the area of the left, you don't need to do as much this time around. So we just need to go into the first door that we see or we can go to the end it doesn't really matter but in this case i go into the first door when you're in this room take a left and go up the stairs and then exit to the door right of the stairs and you want to go left all the way along the bridge at the top you want to go past the police officer and the the blacksmith area and you want to enter this room here now need to catch this guy talking about some form of undercover work so he cycles through some different lines he says let's see what's new and in some cases he talks about gamers and sometimes he doesn't but when he talks about something being undercover you want to ask him the question by pressing x and you'll say what did you say about 10 years once he's entered that line and he tells you you do not squeal and then you'll bag yourself the achievement for talking too much so this is the undercover work that was taking place that we saw in playthrough one. Once that's happened, you want to exit the back to the street and you want to exit to the right and we want to go to the area where the parrot girl is.
So now that we are in the parrot zone, you'll see the biker guy run away and the parrot is no longer to be found. The girl is going to keep skipping forward. Eventually she'll realise that the parrot isn't there and she'll keep walking forward until she eventually exits via the gate. Once she's gone out of the gate, you'll bag yourself the achievement safe out, which is the last missable achievement of this game. So once she is out, it should pop now and as long as you've been following along, everything should be good. Once you've got yourself that one, you want to exit and you want to go back to the cargo docks. So exit the area, go to the right to the cargo docks and run forward to the area where your dad disappeared off of screen. So now it's the final push, 10 minutes left, so go straight to the miner once you're back in control of dad and you want him to smash the pot at the bottom. When that pot smashes you want to pick up the uh, part of the gear to progress forward. Once you've got that one you want to rewind the time so he rebuilds his pot and then you want to climb up the ladder to the dude at the top that is heckling him. So once you're with the grumpy old man, forward time as far as possible and he will keep putting pressure on the guy not to screw up, climb back down the ladder and then have the miner timeline go all the way to the end and he will send um, some pots and stuff to the basket. Once that happens, climb up and then forward the timeline of the bully all the way to the end to move him out of the way so you can cross over the planks. Once he's out of your way, cross across the solid water and you want to have the dude on the left hand side forward his timeline all the way so drain all of the water out of the main pond and fill up the, the big shaft uh, and he'll say that he's done. You want to make your way across to the lady on the other side and have her swing her kick at the generator but not actually hit it. Rewind dude's time all the way back so that it fully drains the water out of the shaft he's just put it in. Once that has happened, you want to go back across to the lady and you want to forward her timeline as far as possible. Once that happens, she'll say something's wrong with the machine, climb down and then you want to pick up the piece of gear or cog that is on the floor and then you want to climb back out of the hole. Once you're back at the top, you want to rewind the lady's timeline so her water goes back into the uh, to the empty cave. You want to go back over to the guy, you want to forward his timeline as far forward as possible. Once that's happened, you want to do the same thing with the lady on the other side, forward her timeline all the way to the end, draining the water out and moving it to the right. Once that's done, it will cause a log to float up to the top. Uh, and this will allow you to proceed through onto the next screen. Now that you're in the next area, you want to have the dude kick over the planks. Once that's out of the way, run up the planks and then you want to go to the top and have the guy at the top of the waterfall by the switch run his time all the way forward to fill up a, um, a hole below full of water. Climb back down the ladder and you want the guy with the planks to walk up to the waterfall and he'll then encourage the dude at the top to hit the switch. You see that he'll move his hand forward saying uh, I'm gonna hit the switch. So climb up, 
forward the guy's timeline so he moves the switch out of the way. And then you want to make your way over to the guy with the planks and you want to forward his timeline all the way to the end. So he throws his planks down. Now that this has happened, you want to make your way across and you want to forward the timeline of the lady here so she drops the planks down, but don't make her hammer the nails into place. We don't want that. So once that's done, we want to go across to the cave on the right hand side and he'll say we need to get the final piece, but there is no final piece in this area. Go back to the left and keep tracking to the left until time starts to crack again. When this happens, run back to the right. So now we're back in control of Alice, move her to the right and there will be some activity with the miner where he clears the hole out and you'll be able to go through a tunnel. Once that happens keep going to the right and you'll be back on the same screen as where your dad was just so shortly ago. Now once we're on the next screen we're gonna wanna stop Alice from getting to her dad. So. When you're through in this area, you want to keep running to the right. The planks will have fallen down from the guy who kicked them over earlier. Keep going to the right and you're going to see some planks land in the water in front of you. So you'll say, Daddy, where are you? Cross over and you're about to witness an accident. When prompted to push X, push X and it will load up and go see your dad because you can't progress any further forward because of the industrial accident. And now you're in control of your father yet again. Okay, so this part is the final hurdle. If you remember during the first playthrough, you saw a shade version of your dad. This is what was actually happening. This is what you're doing now. You want to keep going to the right and you want to keep going to the right forever. You'll get stuck on the tiny rock you'll need to hop over, but keep going to the right. He'll fall, he'll go through rocks and all of this kind of stuff and you'll see a plot twist unfold in front of your eyes. Just keep going as far as you can until you get to the clock again there's a lot of story here, so I'm not going to narrate this any further, but keep following it to the right until you hit the clock. So now we are entering the clock as we come into this area you'll walk forward and you will see that you are part of the clock again and you look like a familiar friend that you met and you never saw this coming from the beginning ever at all it was never obvious and then you want to try and fix the piece of the cog by pressing x on it but you'll realize that you're missing the piece that you had in part playthrough one I, uh, not ideal right so once that happens you'll find that you're stuck in a time loop and you will need to go to the left. Now 
Now that you're in this area, keep walking to the left. You'll be grabbing on things like rocks and that kind of stuff to keep your balance. You kind of hit this like pencil drawn makeshift rocks and a pencil drawn makeshift workbench. When you sit down at this workbench where he goes to attempt to do anything, he falls through the floor. After he falls through the floor, you want to go to the left and continue forwards. After you've fallen through the floor, like I said just a second ago, we want to keep going to the left and that's pretty much it. You eventually have a cutscene where he drops a piece of paper which is a drawing of the, uh, the piece that Alice puts together. And if you've been following the guide in the Plus playthrough you would have figured that out. Keep going to the left and you want to keep going to the left until you re-bump into yourself once again. Uh, and at this point you will bag yourself the achievement called the uh, for completing the game with the, the worst ending, I think it's called The End with a question mark. But yeah, keep going, and that's every achievement in this game, so that's all all 13 of them, and that is the full 1000G. I've been Jessica from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, drop us a like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and happy hunting!